Welcome once again to EWTN's Bookmark. I'm Doug Keck, your host. Our special guest, Jose Carlos Gonzalez Hurtado. His book, New Scientific Evidence for the Existence of God, proudly published by EWTN Publishing here in the States. Available through our EWTN Religious Catalog, EWTNRC.com, for all things Catholic. Welcome, Jose Carlos, El Presidente <laughs> of <laughs> EWTN nice. Spain. Thank uh, you, Meg. And, and, and somebody who's been working with us uh, wonderfully for a number of years. Uh, somebody really, if you read this book, understands your background and what you were doing and really took that skill set you have and turned it to uh, focus on evangelization in yeah. your life. Yeah, that's actually true. It's, uh, you know, everything is providential, Doug, and, and even that this book is providential. The fact that I am here today with you, uh, and as you know, the fact that I'm with you, WTN, right. um, it's all, uh, you know, the proof that right. providence works and exists and works and, and oh my God, it's, right. you know, right. it works. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And you were on with Father Mitch, so people would have seen you on with that program. One of the things I was wondering, you say the new scientific evidence for the existence of God. What's new? Well, in the last, um, let's say, three decades or something like that, um, there have been evidences in biology and physics and cosmology and mathematics um, and chemistry that if you want, I mean, I don't use the word demonstrate, but I, that give significant evidence mm -hmm. that there is a creator, that there is a God that uh, started with all this. And this is what the right. book is about. Right, and you don't get specific, and you make the point it's non-sectarian in a sense. It, it's like you're not saying it's Jesus Christ. You're not make, pushing the point it's Allah or, you know, whoever it happens to be, you know, the great guy in the sky. It's, but there is a creator. That's exactly right. And I, it was intentional for several reasons, but it was intentional because I want this book um, to be used by atheists, mm -hmm. to convert atheists. Uh, and, uh, and agnostics, and to bring them home. And if I started talking, you know, about the, uh, you know, the miracles of Fatima, which there are right. two, right. you know, the people would say, hey, well, that's not for me. I'm just right. Or you just say, well, Jesus Christ really is the way. I mean, you yeah. kind of allude to the fact that that's another book, exactly. And you know, you could probably prove that. Uh, it, is, it is exactly right. But it's the, the you know, there, there are some other uh, authors, and you know, good guy. I mean, there's a friend of mine. He's a French author, and. And they wrote a book, you know, some evidences, but they went more into their religious. Right. So, hey, Jesus Christ is the way, and, you know, he's the son of God, and the Catholic Church is the real one. Right. Uh, all that I agree, but you right. know what? I think that if you give this book to somebody that is far from the existence of God, mm -hmm. he or she would say, well, that's not for me. So, intentionally, I finished the book with the, uh, as right. you know, the last chapter is, and now what? Right. Okay, so now that we have proven that there is a God, what's, uh, what's the next, what's the next, thing? next logical step? And the, and the next logical step, and I can say it, and I say it at every lecture, is there's only one God that actually fits what the science is telling us, and it's the Judeo-Christian God. Because mm -hmm. it's the only God that said, you know, everything is, uh, you know, was created right. ex nihilo, you right. know, from the beginning. Now, yeah. now in the introduction, uh, y you make the fact that this book will leave no one indifferent. What do you mean? Well. Uh, the, you know, the atheists, they feel themselves um, challenged by, the, by these, uh, the, the discoveries of science. Uh, the reason is like I, I, you know, I sustain that atheism is an ideology and it's a religion, it's a negative religion. So you right. have your dogmas and you have your, your beliefs, it's just that it's not based on reason. So when reason goes and shows, mm -hmm. uh, atheism, you know, fades. And that is what I mean. It's like uh, no, and I'm receiving it. I mean, the, the truth of the fact is, like one of the of the big observation, big surprises is, on one side, Doug is many, many, youngsters are is, uh, you're writing me, say, hey, you know what? I read your book, or mm -hmm. I saw this podcast, or I see this interview, and I can no longer be an atheist right. after this. And I have dozens of that, and it's, uh, to my right. surprise. And then I have the other people, you know, I hate, I I found one thing that is called the haters. In, in YouTube, so when, when they put something in YouTube, of, you know, you know, an interview, mm -hmm. you have people saying, you know what? Uh, Why yeah, I hate this yeah, particular interview? I hate interview. this guy, and okay. I hate this guy. Uh, I hate the Catholic Church, and I, you know what? They believe in Mickey Mouse and all these kind of things. And this is what I mean. The truth is, like, mm -hmm. it's making some people, many people, getting closer to the church. But it's making them at least think. Yes. Yes. Which is what you're trying to get them. Yes. Even if you get a re negative reaction, I was but, interesting too because you make the point 
in a lot of ways, you kind of take a very positive view in the sense that you say that atheism is defeated and is actually in retreat. It is absolutely true. You, and, and, you know, it's funny when I was reading this and you were talking about that, that they've, they've launched, uh, you know, these last desperate attempt and you're saying this and I'm thinking, well, it sounds like the Battle of the Bulge. I turn the page and you talk about the Battle of the Bulge. Exactly. And then you also talk about an event that happened during the Spanish Civil War, right? Exactly. You know, it's, it's exactly right. It's, uh, during the Spanish Civil War, when the communists were defeated, in the last very moment, exactly like the Nazis in the Second World War, mm -hmm. they uh, started an offensive. And it took by surprise the Allied forces in the Second World War and the, you know, if you want the Christian forces in the, in the Spanish Civil War, because they didn't expect that. And they thought that the communists, let's say in the Spanish Civil War, mm -hmm. that they, they were more, they were stronger than they were really are. And this is exactly what is happening with the new atheists, mm -hmm. you know, with Dawkins, Hitchens, uh, Bennett, uh, Sam Harris, uh, you know, Fre all these guys, I think that what they are doing is, is like what they call el canto, el canto del cisne in Spanish, which is like the, the, swan, uh, the swan singing, you know, right, when it's about... Yeah, the fat lady singing, you exactly, refer to an fat, opera here, the right? Fat yeah. lady, when the fat lady is singing in the opera, you know, you know that it's going to finish. But it takes a long time, you point out, if it's to actually Wagner. finish, if it's <laughs> Wagner, right? Yes, yeah, if it's okay. Wagner, it takes right. a long time. Right. But, uh, but this is exactly what is happening. I think that is... You know why? Because there was a time, you know, if you look at the 18th century, uh, many uh, scientists genuinely believed that science was going to uh, put God outside. Now it's in, uh, that is an impossible uh, something to sustain. That, that cannot be sustained based on, on science. What we know is that the more that we know about science, the more that we get closer to the existence of somebody that we call God. Right. Uh, so the only way for atheism is ignorance, mm -hmm. you know, and that is you know, just a qu question of time until ignorance fades. Right. It's interesting, too, because you do make the point, and, and Father Spitzer had always talked about the number of majority of scientists who are theists these days, but why do you think, then, that's not the impression most people have? Well, why do you think it? You know, who has the interest on keeping us away from God? Okay? It's one of these myths. I, I keep saying the myths, you know, the Spanish Inquisition legend. Right. It's right. a legend. Right. It's a myth. It's not true. Who has the interest on keeping it? The Crusades legend. It's a myth, it's a legend, it's not true. Okay, so this is another one. It's exactly, as you said, 95% of the, and it's important to say it so that everybody knows, 95% of the Nobel Prizes in, in, uh, in science over the last 100 years, they were theists or they were religious people. So less than 5% were atheists or agnostic. So this means that a, you know, a super majority mm -hmm. of uh, scientists right. were theists. It's not the case when they go to literature Nobel Prizes. You know, right. when you, you know, you're invented, right. you, you can invent well, something that is not God. You well, one of the points you make in the book I thought was really good is that, that so many of the leading proponents that you were mentioning uh, of atheism don't have a background in science. Hmm. Most of them come out of some version of the humanities. Yes. It's exactly, you know, it's funny because they, they support science, but Bennett was a philosopher, uh, Hitchens, uh, he passed away, he was a journalist. Right. Sam Harris, you know, he took his time to finish philosophy. Um, Michel Onfray, I think, is a teacher in France of uh, philosophy, too. Mm. I think that the only guy is Dawkins, but he has not been practicing science. His background is what, zoology or something? Zoology. Right. Okay. So they are not scientists. Right. And they, you know, and for whatever reason, the people think that they're scientists. Most of the scientists, they, you know, they think, and I put it in the book, that these guys are, are, are you know, full of. Well, you say here, there will always be atheists. You go on to say, to believe that the universe was produced by itself demonstrates great credulity, and to oblige oneself afterward never to ask any more questions is a sign of great intellectual self-restraint. Go on to say, to avoid wondering how life appeared is immature and furthermore not very scientific. Yes. As I said, you know, the only reason why you can be continue being an atheist is not to ask questions. Mm -hmm. If you ask questions, and then you get the answers, and then you end up uh, you end up saying, hey, you know, there's absolutely need of an intelligence behind everything that has happened. And that is why in the, the book, you know, I, I quote hundreds of scientists and Nobel Prizes that have converted from atheism to, uh, uh, you know, to theism or Christianity or Catholicism just because, you know, science forced them. You know, there's a quote from Max Planck. Max Planck is the father of quantum, quantum physics. Quantum physics. He right. says, like, 
science imposes, meaning it is, makes necessary, the idea of God. Mm -hmm. So the idea here, too, of the idea that the second law of thermodynamics, we hear that a lot, okay? What is that? The second law of thermodynamics was also first written by a Catholic, an Austrian, uh, you know, scientist called mm -hmm. Boltzmann. Um, basically what he says is the like universe will have an end, mm -hmm. okay? So it's like, uh, he creates a concept of, it's called entropy, which mm -hmm. is, the uh, is basically the, the measure of the disorder in a system. And what he says, what the law says, is like the uh, disorder will always increase. So, so it starts in order and then always yeah. moves to disorder. And that is that the, scientific, that the physical uh, things happen in one direction only. So at the end of it is like the disorder will continue growing to the extreme that the universe will have a thermical end. Mm -hmm. Now, this poses a problem again for atheism because if the universe is not everything that exists and it has a beginning and it has an end, then you necessarily need something that is after the end and before the yeah, beginning. Yeah, some sort of prime mover. And that is exactly what God is. Right, because you make the point in here that uh, uh, everything is, nothing is infinite. Absolutely. The, uh, you know, I, I quote a letter there from Karl Marx, so actually Fr Frederick Engels to Karl Marx mm -hmm. um, in 1869, when they were, um, you know, when this theory, the second law of thermodynamics was only a theory, mm -hmm. now it's proven. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they were saying, hey, listen, if this is true, says Engels to Marx, if this is true, this proves that God doesn't exist. Hence, it cannot be true. Which mm. actually explains how the atheist mind thinks, which is anything that proves that God they exists, have to deny it. it has to be they have true. To, they have to yeah. attack that. The other thing I thought was something called the uncertainty principle from quantum physics. Why is that important to understand? Um, because it, it demonstrates the freedom of the human being. Yeah, free will. It's tied the into free that will. free will. It's yeah. interesting. Right. The guy that pointed this out is Heisenberg. Mm -hmm. He was a super religious guy, a very Christian religious person. He, he quoted this sentence, like, listen, the first sip of the glass of the science will make you atheist, but mm -hmm. at the bottom of the, of the glass is God waiting for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, listen, the uh, uncertain principle says that in the quantum physics, every sub-atomic um, um, uh, um, particle, you cannot define the distance, so where it is, or the velocity, or the speed, at the same time. Basically, they're free. Mm -hmm. And there's another guy, which another Nobel Prize called Compton, American guy, that he says, in reality, this applies to everything. It's the quantum physics and the non-quantum physics, so the, the real, if you want, in the real uh, mm -hmm. size physics. It's just that we cannot appreciate it. So basically, it demonstrates that there's a free will. Right, you also talk about something, uh, the theorem about incompleteness. Oh. I, this is one of my favorite guys, Kurt Gödel. Mm -hmm. He's Austrian too. I mean, as you know, my wife is Austrian, so yes, I, I right, pay right. tribute all the time. And to you have seven children. Right? I have, yes. Right. And, uh, and I your wife really likes Star Trek, and you like Star Wars, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly recall, right. right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yes. Right. So we have this. Yeah, right. I, I mean, it's no, much no, better no, Star no, Wars. No, no, so right. like, <laughs> but anyway, so this guy, he's the the best mathematician in the history of humankind. Mm -hmm. you know, and probably the best. Um, logical guy after Aristotle, if you take out St. Thomas of Aquinas. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he demonstrated that necessarily that God exists if um, arithmetics has to be consistent. So the theorem of incompletitude is, they're, compli they're complicated, but basically that what they say is like, for arithmetics to be complete and to be consistent, uh, they ha you have to have God. Mm -hmm. because there is no system that is complete that has all the um, proofs mm -hmm. of itself within the same system. So you, are, you have to ask for a bigger one. Mm -hmm. And in the bigger one, you have to ask for a bigger one. Okay. And so it goes There's until, something not exactly, quite until, until it gets to God. And that's so God. if you don't have God, mm -hmm. arithmetic is not consistent, mathematics is not consistent, science is not consistent. Right, now you started writing this book like 21 years ago. Yeah, well. Did it take you 21 years to write it? If no. so, why? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, well, I started write, I started giving lectures on science and God uh, when I was living in Ukraine, uh, yeah, 20 something years ago, or I don't know, you know 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And that is how it started. I started giving these lectures then, and I continued when I was living in Germany, then I continued when I was living in France. 
uh, I went to Spain, my mother country, to, to give lectures, and then the editor mm -hmm. thought it was a good idea to write the book. Okay. Uh, because, you know, I, there were some uh, videos in YouTube that mm -hmm. were, you know, having traction, and he said, oh, you know what? Right. And it's actually, it's actually true, you know, uh, to the surprise of many, including myself, I mean, selling very, very well in Spain. So from the time you actually said, I'm going to finish the book, how long did it take you? Uh, two years. Uh, two years. Now you say, man cannot live without God, but then you also say, needing God in order to exist frequently stirs up our pride. What do you mean? Frequently is that? You say, uh, needing God in order to exist frequently stirs up our pride. Yeah, what because, you, uh, you know, some atheists, what they say is, I just don't want God to exist. Mm -hmm. and, I this I, and, and this is what is important. It's like when St. Thomas of Aquinas says, say, listen, people that are atheists, there are three reasons for faith. You want three components of faith. One is reasoning, the second one is will, and the third one is the grace of God. And he says, and I have, I have checked it many, many times, that the one that is missing most of the times is will. Mm -hmm. It's simply, I just don't want to God. I will not serve, yeah, really, I will going not serve. back to the original exactly. sin, basically. There's right? a guy called Thomas Nagel that I quote there. He says, Listen, I'm always surprised about the people that are around me, the smart people, they believe in God, he says. Mm -hmm. He's an atheist. I said, well, that, that shocks me, because the, the one thing that I don't want is a universe with God. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I don't need is that I don't want to need God. Mm -hmm. What is he saying in reality? I mean, he, this is what he says, and now I'm, I'm just right. interpreting myself. And what he's saying is, hey, I want to be God. I don't want to be a creature. And, and, you know, you have to have some humbleness to, uh, to believe in God, because that actually makes you, you know, a super important thing in the, in the, in the uh, mm -hmm. creation, but you, don't, you are not God. Mm -hmm. And many atheists, what they want to be is probably God. Right. Well, nobody, they don't want to be accountable yeah. to anybody else. I thought this was interesting, too, because we, you know, we talk about the Big Bang Theory, and then we get into biology, and you say, as all biologists know or ought to know, that's impossible for life to have appeared on Earth purely by chance. They all know that the experiments aiming to reproduce the primordial soup, remember hearing about that all the time, in which life supposedly appeared were such colossal failures that in practice they've all been abandoned. Yes. And people still believe that. Yes, it's another myth. I mean, there, there were some experiments called the Miller-Urey experiments in the uh, 1970s, and they tried again in the 1980s, which is exactly the primordial mm -hmm. soup. So they put, you know, some uh, phosphates and God knows what, and, and they put uh, electricity, and they try to re replicate what happened at the beginning. But there's no, there's no life coming out of that. Mm -hmm. And they tried again and again, and there's no life. And everybody mm -hmm. knows that the, it's so much not true that they have been abandoned. So right. those kinds of experiments. And we don't know yet right. how life has appeared in our, in our, in our planet. Mm -hmm. There's a famous um, interview with Dawkins, uh, you know, a guy called Ben Stein, and he keeps pushing him. So, yeah. okay, so where is it? And finally, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where life is. Nobody knows. Ben Stein did yeah, that. Ben yeah. Stein was yeah, doing yeah, it. Too. Pretty, I could yeah. see where he pushed. And, right. and, uh, he's an economist. Uh, yeah, right. and Dawkins were like he yeah. completely lost it. Right. You know, uh, right, because he's asking him for actually yeah. uh, credible Good. answers and yeah. responses. I thought you say these discrepancies between reality that is known by scholars. We talked about this earlier, and unknown by the public at large, occasionally seems to be caused by special interests, you say, and you also point out, I thought this was interesting, they are not unique to our times, and then you talk about the idea, Christopher Columbus, when he was going to say, everybody already knew the globe was basic, I mean, the scientists knew that it was round, yeah. but the average person didn't know that. Yes, there are many, that is why I say at the beginning that it's just a question of time that atheism will be disappearing, and the reason is that it's a question of time, that everything that is in, right in this book will get to uh, many, many people, and they, you know, there's no question that that when you see this, mm -hmm. uh, then the question will be, okay, which God is it? Okay, and or, or how how do I operate after the existence? What does it mean for me? Mm -hmm. Okay, that is the question that you should be asking. God exists. What does it mean for me? Right. But the question of God exists is is beyond. I mean, it's, right. sorry. It's so a, the it, next level is yes. how involved in my life is he? Exactly. Right. And. I also, I also think that many people, many, or some atheists, and I'm observing it in the lectures that I give um, and in the letters that I get, that some people, they just simply don't 
want God to exist because that will change the way I live. Right, right. And that will change what it means for me in my life. And, uh, you know, I haven't settled in this kind of whatever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, boy, I, you know, that is too much for me to, to gulp. Right, absolutely. Uh, right. People of poor change. Yeah. We, we don't like to have to change. And you, another one I thought was interesting when you talk about Calvin and uh, the blood of the heart and uh, the fact that, that that I didn't quite understand why they got upset about this. But I was also wondering about the fact, has anybody threatened to burn you in the public square yet? No. Okay. <laughs> but as I said, you know, there are fantastic things happening. As I said, I mean, like I receive emails, I receive uh, messages from LinkedIn, messages, I don't know how they get my email, but then, mm. you know, people that are saying, hey, you know what, I can no longer be an atheist. I mean, today, mm -hmm. uh, when I was, I, you know, in Birmingham, yesterday I was checking my email, really? and a guy, yeah, and a guy from uh, in LinkedIn, he said, a young guy, he said, Jose Carlos, thank you very, very much. You know, I mean, I almost break into tears because it's like, he, you know, I didn't expect that, Doug. I, mm. You know, I was doing this, and like, hey, you know, I'm putting this forward so people will right. read the truth, but I didn't realize that they can change so fast. Right, right. And people, and this guy was telling me, his name was Gonzalo, he was saying, he said, listen, I no longer can be an atheist because what you're saying, it is actually, it is irrational for me to believe, right. to not believe in God. Right, that's the point I think yeah. you make in the book, is that yeah. you really have to deny reality yes. to be an atheist. Yes. You may not come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ is the Son of God right away, but you have to realize yeah. there's some creator Absolutely. outside. And then, you know, as I said, uh, and this I don't say in the book, but I say mm -hmm. in the lectures, is the only God that fits with what we know in science mm. is the Judeo-Christian God. Right, right. Because the uh, Eastern r r religions God is, they believe, they really believe in the universe, uh, the, the eternal universe. It's like the, the myth of the right. eternal return, I don't right. know how to say in English. Right. But the, uh, the only, the, the, to the extreme that there's a, a scientist called Schroeder, uh, he was, uh, he's a professor in the Hebrew University. I, I, was, I was also lecturing in the Hebrew University at one point. The, and this guy makes the, 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 you know, what happened in the Big Bang, mm -hmm. and he puts it together with the Genesis. And he says, listen, it is, it is actually parallel. What, mm -hmm. what the Genesis tells us, without being a, a science book, uh, you know, everything mm -hmm. that is written there fits with what we know in science. What's the difference uh, you, t you deal with in one of your chapters, creationism versus intelligent design? Um, Wow, that's a difficult one. Intelligent design is a theory uh, that has been used, the problem is that it has been used depending on by whom, mm -hmm. in which way, and that is part of the problem, because right. I think that part of the intelligent design I would, I would ascribe to, but you know, some authors, um, you know, they have, uh, you know, they have taken it, if you want, too far, right. uh, to the extreme that is not um, scientific. Why I say it's not scientific? Because to be scientific, you have to have the falsibility principle, mm -hmm. meaning you have to be able to prove that is not true. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, the Trinity, you know, mm -hmm. is it as, so the, to believe that there is one God and three persons, is it a scientific um, uh, statement? No, it's not, mm -hmm. okay? Why? Because I can never prove it false. Uh, the the uh, intelligent design, to some extent, and with some authors have gone into that, into that side. Now, based on, uh, on a good intention, which is to break evolutionism. Evolutionism mm -hmm. is the, is the uh, materialistic way of the theory of the evolution. I make the difference between theory of evolution, which is not contradicting mm -hmm. our faith, with evolutionism, which is materialistic, right. and it's contradicting our faith. And to fight, if you want, evolutionism, uh, intelligent design started. Right, and that's where you get into like a scientism. That yes, uh, you, you say you will find in this book compelling scientific evidence for the inevitability of the existence of God without any. And we talked about this before. Non-sectarian mind will accept, and you you talk about Anthony Flew, who, who was a notorious uh, atheist, uh, atheist who, who came to believe. Uh, you also talk about the physicist and Anglican priest John Hulkinghorn. The question concerning the existence of God is the most important question we must face about the nature of reality. Yes, and this is an important thing because some, some people come and say, well, God exists, God exists. I don't care. That is right. not true. That is so much not true that the people that are saying that statement, I don't care, 
he or she doesn't really believe it. You know, the fact that God exists or doesn't exist, it changes your life. It, it completely changes the meaning of your life. John Paul Kinghorn himself, he was an atheist, and then he converted into a theist, then he converted into Christianity, and mm -hmm. he became, you know, a priest in the Anglican Church, and he, at the age of almost 60. And um, so he himself uh, came to that conclusion, he said, if God exists, it actually changes everything. The way that I look at you, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you are not a product of cash, of, of coincidence. You mm -hmm. are you are uh, somebody that God wants. And if you are somebody that God wants, you know, I have to have a respect for you because I have to have a respect mm -hmm. for him. Now, if I am an atheist and you are just a coincidence, a right, casualty, right, right. you know, there's a guy there also that I mentioned. Part of the simulation. Yes, a part of the simulation. <laughs> or, no, he says, you know, human beings are like cockroaches with a... Um, is this a Singer? Or is yeah, like, yeah, Singer. Peter Singer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah amazing guy. I mean, it's like, Very Kafkaesque approach. <laughs> yeah, but, it, but, you know, but this is the ultimate, the ultimate logic of atheism. Right. It's like, hey, you know what, if we are here just by coincidence, the reason that you are here right. is not more evident or more important than if you are a cockroach with right. significant Absolutely. processes, mental processes. And it, which is, I, I end up saying in the end, it's like, listen, if you want to be, uh, if this is not the reason to convert, but this is a practical reason, to be happy, Doug, to be happy right. in, this, in this world, you end up having to believe in God. If you're an atheist, that brings you to desperation. Right, absolutely. Just before we go, another book in the works, or? Well, uh, possibly. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, make sure you stop by the next Thank time. Thank you very much. Oh, it was great to be Thanks with you, of course. Jose Carlos Gonzalez Hurtado, New Scientific Evidence for the Existence of God, proudly published by EW10 Publishing. Again, available through our EW10 Religious Catalog. And I'm Doug Keck. Check out that book and check us out next time right here on EWTN's Bookmark. Thanks for stopping.